Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Pathway, where we apparently uh, still have a bit of driving to do before we finish this second adventure. Honestly, I'm pretty happy to see that this is so large. It gives me hope that uh, there's a lot more game left. I was a little worried that if we like wrap up the second adventure in the third video, the series is only going to be like six or seven episodes, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. I would like it to be more than that. So I'm glad to see that it appears it will be. I've been looking at the map here. And I think we're going to go this way. We're going to swing through the place where we could recruit a new team member. Now that we have unlocked um, the double shot character, who is a woman, uh, I think it's possible that she'll be the one we could pick up. And we could pick her up without breaking our, uh, our women only run so we can still unlock Rose. Um, also, even if this wasn't here, I think this is still the right way to go because this is the side that the shop is on. And we may want to buy more fuel and we certainly have the money to be able to do that. So, yeah, there's quite a few combat encounters between here and there, which is fine, because we're very good at them. <laughs> we're just extremely good at killing Nazis. Uh, so do I want to... I guess there's no reason to do any repairs or anything right now. Let's just keep moving. Maybe we'll run into a camp. In fact, yes, we did. Promising colors in the distance turned out to be nothing but useless trash. So, how much, how much veering off do we want to do? The shop is not super far away. And let's, uh, let's take in a couple of additional nodes here. Alright, turns out the desert is boundless. I mean, it's not. I definitely can't move the camera past this artificial boundary here, but I, I guess I get what they're saying. It kind of, it seems boundless. When you're down there looking at it from eye level, it looks boundless. Alright, we hide from some Germans. I will say I am a little bummed out about the number of events that we've seen multiple times already, but I guess we are at this point like four hours into the game. Alright, we found a watering hole surrounded by old hoof traps. We're definitely going to stop and rest up here. Yeah, they would have to have an awfully large number of events for us not to be seeing repeats at four hours, but... The fact that we're seeing so many repeats at four hours does also mean that we're probably going to see an awful lot of repeats by the time we're done with the game. Between the sand dudes, you come across the outer walls of a temple complex. The entrance is half buried in the sand, but you soon manage to excavate it. You explore the interior of the temple and finally enter the main vault. Unfortunately, you run directly into the guns of a squad of soldiers who clearly found another way in. Boy, some of the, uh, some of the ancient text on the obelisks and stuff in this desert is very glowy and weird. You gotta, like, actually bring characters who can read ancient languages into these tombs. Yeah, see, like, all the glowing here. I'm concerned about the glowing. Well, this poor medic is in a terrible spot. All right, let's just flatten him real quick. Um, I guess the, the way I want to do this is just shoot him, then knife him. Okay, good crit. She got both of her points of bravery back. I do feel like if we actually had a third character, they're going to have to like really ramp up the difficulty of these combat encounters. And it's possible that these are all just this easy because that's the, the difficulty level that we're currently on. Um, but... It's also possible that it is already, it's actually actively scaling stuff to our current number of characters, right? That, that totally could be the case. How do I want to deal with this guy? We know the shotgun's guaranteed to get him. Provided I hit with it. I think I'm going to move to here and just, just take the guaranteed kill. I guess we could take the bleed. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do it this way because of the chance of doing enough damage to kill him in one hit and thus chalk up another knife kill. And then uh, we could run down here and try to shoot this guy. Unfortunately, there's no cover except the cover he's already pressed up against. So maybe that's not the smart move. And we know there's an enemy running around back here somewhere, but I have no idea where. I'm kind of thinking that maybe we just chill out here and reload and pass. Let them come to us a little bit. Hey, apparently that guy who's running around back there is content to stay back there.
Well, I guess we'll just do that thing that we always do. You know, as long as it keeps working. All right, are you going to come out? Are you going to make me come over there? He's going to make me come over there. All right, well, let's approach him from opposite sides. Make sure he can't run away. Okay, we finally found him. That is a pretty bad position. We are not going to be able to interact with him at all, with Brunhilde. And I don't think we can do 51 damage, even at max... Yeah, even at max damage with a crit, we do 47. So I'm afraid he is just going to get to shoot back. We try to fall back to a position where he at least won't have a free crit. If I shoot at him from over here... Nope, never mind, can't do that. I don't have the range. And if I try to take cover anywhere, I'm out of firing range. Yeah, alright, I'm just going to stand right next to him and shoot him. And then he's going to shoot me back, and then I'm going to shoot him back some more. I'm going to have Brunhilde keep running around this way, in case he falls back over here. Okay, nope, he decided he didn't want to fight at all. It's possible that the combat AI is not, uh, super good. Nah, 17 health. He'll probably survive a punch. I don't think that there are any achievements. We're not, like, working up to anything by getting punch kills. There's no reason we need to be fishing for them or anything. Um, it's just me trying to save ammunition. But it's really not a big deal. <laughs> Okay, even more fuel. Another one of these. That's nice. A terrible gun that I don't actually want. Uh, I mean, we have a lot of terrible guns that I don't actually want. Any sniper character we pick up is going to have a sniper gun, a sniper rifle already that is at least this good. I have to imagine. All right, and we've discovered a traitor. Would it be foolish not to purchase all the fuel? So I'm not sure that we'll need all of it. And the money does carry over between runs. Here, let's uh, sell him all of our valuables. The money does carry over between runs, so wasting it is bad. You know, there's like there's an actual mechanical incentive not to be wasteful. Definitely not buying this pea coat. Definitely not buying this terrible gun. Don't need compression bandages. Don't need ammo. So yeah, it really is just do we buy. 600 fuel or 600 dollars worth of fuel or not yeah i guess 600 dollars is a low enough amount in the grand scheme of things that if even if it does turn out to be a waste it's not that big of a deal so now that we have all this extra fuel would i rather spend two points of fuel driving to the oasis and back than spend the um the items necessary to get our uh, to get our uh, armor put back together. I think I would. We're, we definitely have enough fuel to make it over to the next shop. We're not going to want to come back again after this, though, probably. Unless we, like, take a really shockingly huge amount of damage at this next node. Okay, another one of these camps where uh, somebody has been through here already. <laughs> Somebody has done the thing. Okay. This man is dead. Uh, this man is also dying of a terrible gaping wound in his side. Ah. Natalia tried. They fell on us like demons. Go to the secret bunker half a mile southeast of here and see if there are any survivors. Okay, so that's a little bit different than the last time we saw this. Let us seek this secret bunker. A short time later, you reach the bunker. Its heavy iron door hangs from its hinges. Once inside, your worst fears are confirmed. The mysterious attackers have struck again. The mangled corpses of the bunker crew are scattered at random on the blood-soaked concrete floor. So are these going to be more zombies, or maybe the people who are creating the zombies? Yeah, some kind of something weird is happening here. You freeze at the sound of heavy breathing, and it's coming from the next room. As you peer through the slightly open door, you see several nightmarish forms clawing at a soldier's corpse. Uh, if only Jackson here. He could, he could just blow them all up. You know how he loves to be very, very incautious with grenades. 
All right. Well, we have a shotgun this time, which is going to make things a little bit easier on old Brunhilde. She doesn't necessarily have to just stand in the middle of the zombie mob. So we see a spore bearer, spore bearer two. It's 57 health. That is considerable. This is a larger area than a lot of the maps that we've seen so far. All right, well, let's start with... We'll have Brynhilde go this way. Do I want to just knife him? No, I want to shoot him and then move afterward, probably. So you run forward. I mean, we're going to have to start doing damage to that guy. I'm going to get stuck in place here by Spore Breath, but... Okay, well, I guess we can just advance. It doesn't look like we're in any danger over here. Yeah, hide behind this chair, this slatback chair. I'm sure that'll provide good cover. All right, so we're going to get spored. Oh, also, there are zombies right here. And those zombie noises are quiet. I wonder if we can turn up just the voice work in the options. I imagine it's controlled by the same slider that controls all of the sound effects. Oh, interesting. That was not who I was expecting him to spore. Right, let's move Natalia to a position where she has a little bit more vision. I was hoping I was going to end up in a spot where I could double shot. Alright, we'll just take that guy down. And then you cannot do very much. I guess you can reload your gun. And we could hunker down, I suppose. Does that zombie have enough... He might have enough movement range to actually hit her. Yeah, sure. This means she can't do the uh, AoE shotgun blast next turn, but she'll be able to do it the turn after. I do think this, uh, this zombie that was right here should be close enough to be able to hit her. See a different is an infected too. That is yes, that is different. I don't know if it's different in a way that's like actually meaningful or not. Okay, these guys are pretty tough. Yeah, we're not gonna be uh, not gonna be getting a lot of free double kills here. All right, so Brynhilda could like run over to ah. Uh, I was kind of hoping I'd be able to... I guess we just gotta take one of these guys down. Uh, I'm gonna run as far this way as I can, I think. Let's minimize the number of zombies we actually have to interact with. Or maybe, like, over here. Shoot that guy. Can I not? There we go. Uh, she does enough damage to be able to one-shot them. We'll run Brunhilda all, or, um, Natalia all the way over here. Okay, hopefully this will get them to sort of bunch up as they approach, and then we can maybe get a really good shotgun blast off. Man, there sure are a lot of them, and they sure do move slowly. Wow, okay, I thought that guy wasn't a big deal, because he did uh, five damage the first time he attacked us, but I guess that was just bad variance. Bad for him, not bad for us. Ew. Don't just throw up on the floor. What's wrong with you? Who raised you? All right, I'm going to fall back a little bit, and I think we're uh, just going to reload. All right, so she's going to be able to double shot. We are not going to have shotgun blast again before the end of the level. But Brunhilde can hit one guy for lethal... I guess we're probably just not going to be able to take the other guy out this turn, right? That is a little inconvenient. Oh, and they're smart enough to stop before they actually... Okay, so let's just back up one space here. You can go for the double shot. Oh no, she's actually going to get them both. Okay. 
Okay, so we are starting to see some more difficult enemies. Not, like, not fancier tactically, but certainly more dangerous numerically. But I really hope that, um, I really hope that that character who is available is the other woman. I would like to pick up another body here. I mean, I guess I'm just going to run all the way in. It would be really good if we knew where they were. Alright, she's got it. Wait, he's actually close enough to knife. Turns out minimum damage still good enough. I do wish it would show you your XP gain on that screen. That would make it a little bit easier to tell, like, exactly how much XP a kill is worth and... For the purpose of distributing XP in the most uh, useful fashion. That would be nice. Alright, found a bunch of ancient coins, a damaged casket, even more grenades. Just, just do that. Alright, we definitely have enough fuel to uh, explore here. Up ahead of you, a detachment of German soldiers are hunkered down among the ruins. They've seen you and are running for cover. Okay, do we need to repair a little bit? It probably would be a good idea. We'll use one of these on each of them. Alright, let's see if the Nazis are moving up in difficulty as well. So far, every every um, Nazi enemy we've seen has just had the one after their name. Are these guys getting tougher? Okay, and there's a slight coloration difference that you can tell at a glance. Ooh, Nazi sniper, that is also new. Okay. Seeing some new stuff here. Uh, I would love to be able to shoot that Nazi sniper, so I'm going to start as far to this side as I can. That Nazi trooper is not going to be killable with anything other than a max damage crit in a single shot. Okay, you can get far enough up here to get the good clean shot on him. If I run to right there, I'm definitely making myself vulnerable to that guy. I'm wondering if we'd be best going here and taking oh I don't even I don't even have double shot available hmm hold on a second Hilda could run to here and maybe get shotgun blast she doesn't have shotgun blast available never mind I spent all my bravery fighting zombies okay I'm gonna run up here and I'm gonna shoot this sniper in his face I think then the knife is definitely not gonna kill him but this could Wow, max damage. Good shot. Then we can probably take this guy out. Alright, pretty good start. Guy moves fast enough that he's going to get the shot he wants, but apparently he didn't want the shot very badly. Well, I mean, not exactly rocket science. Your numbers are higher, but your uh, your combat intelligence could still use some work. Get stabbed by a lady wearing a circus costume. It's important with deal when dealing with Nazis not just to defeat them, but to make them look as ridiculous as possible while defeating them. So this is this is usually a good start. All right, uh, we have no use for this gun. It's better than this one. Okay, more German trucks. We hide by the side of the road. I wonder if there is actually a second outcome to that one. Alright, come on. Be the right friendly. In the shade of a palm grove, you sneak up to the enemy camp. As you peer through the bushes, you see a sprawling, apparently deserted archaeological site. But then you spot a few guards patrolling the area. Just as you are about to discuss what to do next, you hear a metallic click behind you. you turn around in dismay to see a half dozen rifles pointed right at you. Okay, well, we cannot grab him and take him hostage. He says, it always pays to be thorough. Yeah, alright, you're not wrong. He's got the drop on us, but we have this great big knife. 
So, I mean, looking at this, it looks like there might be four maps on this adventure. Maybe that first one is just short because it's sort of like the tutorial. Oh, Attack Dog 2, which only has as, mu as much health as the basic Nazi trooper. Alright, I think the smart play here is going to be controlling this guy first, right? Because this dude doesn't have the range to attack us. Oh, we see the other Nazi. Where is he? He is a medic one and he is all the way over there. Okay, not a thing we have to worry about. Yeah, I'm fairly confident we can do this without uh, being at risk of getting attacked by any of the others. Actually, no, that guy's totally in range. Shock troopers are just really fast. Okay, fair enough. Well, I'm gonna get shock troopered. That was a good shot. So we're back to being just under the level of being able to do um, single lethal hits. Which does complicate things. Okay, he chose not to take the shot, which I really appreciate. So we have a pretty good double shot available here. And then Brunhilde's got cleanup. Wow. Cleanup that is barely even necessary. Uh, that guy, that guy's gonna get to shoot Brunhilde. I could at least give her cover by standing here, but we're way less likely to be able to get the uh, get the kill from there. I think I'm just gonna put Brunhilde in a position to uh, to guarantee the kill. All right, let's see what that little medic pistol can do. Well, you know, one benefit of it is that it's very light, so it doesn't impede the, f the fleeing. So he feels very strongly about that. Pretty sure this doesn't explode in a large enough area to damage him, so we'll just take a pot shot at him over the cover. Yeah, it's worth a try. And Brunhilde is not going to be able to do anything this turn. It is a shame that that shotgun can only hold two rounds. Wow, he's like, he's very dedicated to his, uh, his Hippocratic Oath, huh? Like, he takes that do-no-harm thing very seriously. Uh, is he, he is behind high cover. I can't hit him from down here. Yeah, he's going to get the high cover no matter how I do this. Well, let's just get lucky then. Wow, good shot. Brynhilde is a little bit worse at shooting guys in cover than uh, Natalia is. Natalia's greater dexterity is coming into play. Oh, we unlocked Bellamy. We found our first disintegrator. A tarnished Adler and Stalnecht prototype. Lowers the carrier's agility by one. Does corrosion damage. That's interesting. Uh, Alright, we'll take the fuel. We don't need these guns. Let's throw that in the valuables. Grab this and then throw that in the valuables. I mean, it's rare quality. Maybe I should hold on to it. Yeah, alright. We'll throw, like, a random gun into the valuables. And this is Baron, who I do not remember, but he is not female, so sadly he cannot come aboard. Don't suppose you have room for another passenger? In fact, we do not, sir. Baron von B, you German gentleman imposter. Is he, sorry, is he a German who is a gentleman imposter, or is he an imposter of a, gen, a German gentleman? I can't, I can't handle all this ambiguity, man. Go home. I'm very disappointed about that, because it's starting to get difficult now. Well, maybe we'll get lucky and we'll run into another recruitment opportunity that does have our uh, our other female recruit available. Okay, the village being uh, the village where the Nazis are, are rounding up the occupants. Well, we definitely need to interrupt that, and I think we're in pretty good shape here. We probably don't need to heal up first. So, I don't... The, the character that's unlocked by killing 100 Nazis is also female. It's not impossible that we could get her before the end of the run, I think. Oh, in fact, we'll definitely get her open. So yeah, maybe she'll, we can get her into the pool and maybe pick her up. 
We're almost halfway to this thing. Now that I know that each of uh, the adventures are not necessarily just one map, it seems much more reasonable to get that 100 knife kill thing before the end of the game. Okay, I am inclined to play aggressively around the sniper, not let him take advantage of his range. Oh wow, we can really get in there. In fact, I can I can get close enough to stab him. I think running up and just bleeding him is probably actually pretty good. Well, let's get Natalia into a good attack position. You know, I'm just going to run all the way up here in the open. We'll do a double shot and we'll see what the situation looks like then. Not bad. Uh, shotgun blast is a maximum range of four squares. We're going to stand right here. I don't quite have range. Well, do I want to leave the sniper at one or do I want to leave the medic alive? If we kill the medic and leave the sniper at, at four health, that's not, I think... I think I'd rather kill the sniper. Maybe it's worth leaving him alive just so we can get a sense of how much damage he does. I suppose that is not totally crazy. Nah, I'm gonna kill him. Things are getting difficult enough that I don't want to play around with potentially large amounts of incoming damage. It was possible for Natalia to get that kill. It would have had to have been a crit, but she could have done it. And if she had, then uh, then Brynhildis turns a little different. Alright, so we got a Nazi trooper level 2 there. Medic just heals himself and runs. Yeah, I think we made the right decision. Can you? Yes, you can. This guy over here is pretty far away, but he has pretty good move and extremely good range with his weapon. I think if I run to here and fire, though, I should be very safe from him. Wow, 60. Nicely done. Okay. Good crits all around. All of a sudden we have all the bravery in the world. This guy's just gonna screw around over here in the corner until we get closer. Alright, let's approach using the high cover. Give us an opportunity to reload, which is particularly good with Brunhilda, because her gun really does not hold a lot of bullets. I think we definitely made the right move, giving her um, shotguns instead of grenades. I think the shotgun area attack ability is better than a grenade area attack, too. If the grenades did more damage, it might be uh, a little bit more interesting of a choice. Alright, well that's a shame. He's gonna... Well, maybe we'll get lucky here. He's only in half cover, right? Yeah, coin flip. Maybe he'll just run away? <laughs> yep. I guess there's one one thing you can trust the Nazis to do. Ah, uh, she's not going to be able to get range on him. I think we should have vision of him from here. Okay, now that we have some idea of how the numbers scale up, I can definitely see how combat will remain interesting and difficult even as our uh, as our combat skills increase. What is this? This is some fancy, pretty good heavy armor. Let's throw that in the valuables and take that. Alright, villagers are... Happy that we saved them, but their well's all screwed up. Fortunately, we know how to fix a well. Ah. Oh. Unfortunately, this time the Germans did a better job of destroying the well, and so it is just gone. And Natalia is going to hit max level pretty soon. So, I'm pretty sure that, like, medkit range plus one doesn't seem very good to me at all. Pistol range plus one seems great, especially because this is going to increase the range at which we can perform double shot. Be able to shoot people who are even further apart. Yeah, Natalia is just bananas, super powerful now. Uh, Brunhilda, when you level up next, you'll be able to get crit chance up or more efficient repair kits. Honestly, neither one of those are really blowing my mind. 
Okay, I don't think we need to take any stuff here. Man, getting a tarantula bite so early on what turns out to be such a long mission is actually going to be kind of a bummer. Not far away, you see vultures circling. We found the remains of a German soldier. You search through what little the vultures have left behind. This man has been dead for some time. He probably died of thirst, but he has a map. We examine the map and somebody has marked a cross not far from our position. Well, obviously, we go check it out. Hidden between some palms, you find a German army crate. You break it open, you're not sure what to make of the contents. We are not eating random pills that we found in the desert. Continue your journey. That just seems... It seems like such a crazy thing to do. Alright, we have enough fuel that we can afford to check this out, I think. Okay. There's more German convoys. They're definitely taking whatever they think they're going to find in this desert pretty seriously. They have really put a lot of men on this. The old camp in the ruins ahead of you seems deserted. You're not sure whether to trust in the apparent peacefulness of this place. And suddenly a detachment of soldiers emerges from the shadows with weapons drawn and mocking grins on their faces. I don't know if it's fair to call this an ambush, given what's almost certainly about to happen to them. It might be the case that nothing that these Germans can do to us counts as an ambush. Alright, they are pretty close together here. We can probably um, do a proper shotgun blast there. This is going to mean leaving Brunhilde out in the open. Okay, I am going to have to move to do it. That's a shame. I was hoping I would get to uh, get to do the blast and then run afterward. So, is there any chance... No, not really. There's there's not really a chance for me to kill the shock trooper with this with this shot. Wow, that was actually very poor damage. I think that was worth leaving Brunhilde in the open. It was a pretty effective turn. So either the medic is going to shoot us and this guy's going to shoot at us, or the medic's going to run over and heal that guy, and then we just kill him next turn anyway when we can both hit him. Yeah, that's... I think those are both totally fine outcomes. I'm going to have Brunhilde. It does use two ammo to do that, so that's a little bit of a shame. We don't really have an easy flank on this guy. I'm going to uh, hit him with the knife, I guess. This will do enough damage that his health is below full, so maybe he'll just heal himself. Yep, okay. I guess he could have healed himself and then just shot her. But now that he has no armor left, Brunhilda's going to be able to pick him off with the bleed. And Natalia, Natalia can probably not hit him. Here, let's give it a shot, because it would be better if we could just do a straight knife uh, attack for a guaranteed kill. Alright, I'm going to give him the bleed. This is fairly likely to do him in. So he could die to the bleed. We've seen it do 10 damage a couple of times. Ah, uh, not quite. But he did not run far enough away to prevent her from finishing him off. Goat, avert your eyes. You don't want to see this. Okay, one more unlock. Which means that if we do find another uh, recruitment node, it's slightly more likely to be a woman. I'm a little worried about getting through this adventure with no uh, with no additional recruits. Might be a thing we have to give up on. I'll push it as long as uh, as long as I feel like it's safe to do so, though. Ah, uh, yeah, we definitely have enough fuel to hit all these nodes. Oh, the footprints that lead you to the interior of the deserted temple end suddenly. In front of you, the lifeless bodies of several soldiers lie in pools of their own blood on the paving stones in front of a massive altar. The corpses are strangely contorted, as if transfixed in a final prayer to a nameless deity. Suspiciously, you look around. You soon discover small holes in the stone slabs. 
The soldiers triggered an ancient trap. Brunilda climbs up onto a stone sarcophagus and cranes her neck. That indentation on the altar. I can't tell exactly what, but there's something in there. So if we had Shadow or Daredevil, man, Jackson would have been really useful here. We've seen uh, a lot of Daredevil options. Alright, let's just try to be careful. Natalia carefully feels her way forward. Step by step, she moves over the bodies, always careful not to step on a loose flagstone. After what seems like an eternity, Natalia reaches the altar. She cheers triumphantly as she gathers up her spoils. She takes the same route back. Okay, well done. Found ourselves a valuable thing, and a valuable thing, and a whole lot of petroleum. Not that we probably needed the petroleum. You see a lot of tire tracks in the sand in front of the lonely desert temple, so you enter carefully and with weapons drawn. We actually are starting to get a little low on ammo. It's worth uh, worth being wary of. We might actually buy ammunition at the trader. Your prudence pays off. In a temple chamber, you take a lone sentry by surprise and quietly disarm him. You question the soldier about his mission, but the man is not inclined to help you. Gee, I wonder why. Just you wait. Sooner or later, my comrades will be back, and then we can all talk together. Yeah, all right, guy. That's not going to work out as well as you hope. You bind and gag the soldier before searching the temple chamber. But the soldiers were here before you were. Uh, but sorry, but the soldiers were here before you were very thorough and you don't find anything. The soldiers here before you were very thorough. It's like this, scratch this word out. As you are about to leave, you hear the noise of engines. The Germans are returning. You quickly seek cover and lie in wait for them. So... I don't think we're going to unlock another character over the course of this adventure. So right now, I think the pool of recruitable characters is very heavily weighted toward males. It is still pretty unlikely that we find another woman. And I'm starting to get worried with like the uh, numerical advancement to the enemies. So we might have to give up on unlocking Rose here until we can like um, start a run with three or four women intentionally. I'm just going to play pretty far back here and kind of let them come to us. Maybe we can... We can jump the dog. We won't be able to hit that medic. I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess that the uh, the other unit that we can't see is a shock trooper. Because that seems to be the way of things. This guy has enough movement to get around there. I think I'm better off hiding over here. He has enough movement. He's going to be able to shoot at us pretty much no matter where we go. Hey, what a surprise. Ow. Okay. Well, the good news is they are standing right on top of each other like that. Uh, the bad news is I don't have the bravery to take advantage. Alright, so the medic, left to his own devices, will probably just heal himself. I'm probably just going to knife this guy. I am allowed to shoot at the Nazi trooper, but I'm not... Yeah, I'm not going to kill him. Let's just let that dude have it. It is at least theoretically possible that we could get to 100 knife kills. I think we'd have to kill almost everything we encounter with a knife. Interesting. The other German soldier didn't move or anything? Huh. All right, let me try to get some vision over here. Okay, so I don't really get to know where the other guy is. Never mind, he's right there because I can't move into that space. Well, and we could just stand in the open and go for the shotgun blast. So I'm a little surprised that we can't see him here. Because when you attack from a position adjacent to a wall, you attack as though you were standing in the space next to it, right? Isn't that what the Codex on Walls says? 
Characters standing at the edge of a wall automatically take a sidestep to shoot past that edge if necessary to hit their target. But I guess that doesn't that doesn't let us see as though we're in this space. We still have to have vision of the target. Alright, I'm gonna run up over here. And we're just gonna give this guy the big knife. I mean, I'm I'm guaranteed not to be able to get a kill this way. Okay, we just rolled the dice and hit the 51. That guy's just going to heal himself and run. I'm not worried about him. Let's see if you never take a uh, if you never take a move hoping for a uh, for a low chance event like that to occur, you will never be pleasantly surprised in the way we just got to be. All right, I do get to knife him to death. 35 is far from a guarantee. I'm debating whether I want to shoot him. The shot probably just kills him. Yeah, alright. The knife attack probably wasn't going to do the job. Maybe I should have gone for the knife attack first. Oh, I should have gone for the knife attack first for the point of bravery, at least. Well, my, my hope there was that we were going to roll low on the gun attack and then get the knife attack anyway. Okay, found ourselves another penicillin syringe, and here's another bad gun to add to our big stack of bad guns. Um, there's no way we use that, right? Oh, I didn't look to see if we actually want to equip that armor, did I? Hold on, Obelisk, I'll be right with you. Yeah, this is uh, 53 points of armor. Should definitely do that. Okay. So the thing vibrates and hums, but stops when we get close. Let's inspect it and hope for a better result this time. Oh, that seems worse. As you circle the area, you notice the humming returns to full volume as soon as you are a few steps from the monolith. Brynhilda suddenly collapses and falls to the ground as if struck by lightning. Brynhilda soon regains consciousness, but she complains of a sharp pain between her eyes. You decide to leave this strange place immediately. Yeah, that seems very reasonable. Okay, so we found some plants. Do we have enough fuel to justify moving to here? Yeah, probably. We can afford to look around a little bit. In the middle of the road, you find an old map. It is completely undecipherable. Keep going. That's weird. I think we can afford to do this. We're right next to a shop. We still have the ability to cash in that uh, that achievement reward for more fuel. The gravel road you've been following for the, fast few, uh, the past few hours finally peters out. Slowly and laboriously, you slog your way through the sand dunes. Suddenly, your jeep gets stuck in the sand. You gun the engine in vain, kicking up a fountain of sand. You're stuck. Well, Brynhilde can probably push it out, right? She's big and strong. Drenched in sweat, Brynhilda works tirelessly to free the stranded car as time marches on relentlessly. Eventually, she manages to maneuver the, de the jeep to more stable ground. The journey can finally continue. I wonder if we would have lost fuel there if we didn't have a brute character. Alright, let's see what we got here. A man is taking a nap in the shade of the palm trees. When he hears you, he jumps up and points invitingly to his goods. He is a traveling merchant. Okay, wow, first aid kits. Those are effective. Let's buy one ammo box. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and buy all of the fuel. I'm gonna buy another ammo box. That almost takes us back to our bullet cap. And then we probably want these first aid kits, right? They seem very good. Uh, we could sell... I mean, listen, we're not gonna use this gun, right? Let's go ahead and uh, sell that liquidate our valuables here let's claim that thousand dollars because there's no reason not to and then I think I'm gonna grab here let's buy the needle and thread and then use it immediately and then also buy these Okay, we just purchased almost everything he had. I'm sure he's overjoyed. So I sort of want to go over there to see if that might be recruitable. 
As you drive around the next dune, you meet a fully loaded Wehrmacht truck coming the other way. The truck makes a tight U-turn in a frantic attempt to escape. Maybe we can actually keep up with this one. You gun the engine and take up the pursuit. After a frantic chase, you finally catch up with the Germans in some ruins. The soldiers hastily take cover as you move into attack. Because for a while there, we were doing enough damage with just the two characters that it was rare for the enemies to get attacks off. That is becoming less and less common, and I'm becoming desperate for assistance. That guy's pretty far away, but not so far away that he won't be able to shoot us. Still, I mean, I think we want to go for the Shock Trooper pretty hard at the beginning of the battle. Come on, Lucky Shotgun Blast. Okay. Not quite lethal. Well, we at least have some decent cover. Although, if the uh, Nazi soldier moves, he can probably move around to a position where he has an open shot on her, because she's not actually pressed up against that. Yeah. Well, I guess the good news is he, um, he put himself in some serious danger to do so. Uh, yeah. We run up here and do a double shot. We don't actually have to hit the medic again, like he probably uh, will just heal and run. So I think I'm gonna move to here and knife this guy, and then we'll try to knife the medic out next turn. I was reluctant to do the obvious double shot into shotgun blast, which would have killed them both, because I don't want to enter the next battle with both of them completely out of bravery. Also, there's something to be said for preserving some ammo, so we'll punch this guy and then stab him. Some survivalist combat. Didn't quite get there, actually. Ruled pretty poorly on that stab. We'll get him this time. What's he at now? He is at... 33, so it would be best if we could throw a punch first. Yeah, okay, we can put Natalia here and still have Brynhilde able to, to reach him. Oh, I'm one space further away than I thought I was. Well, 33. 33 is pretty high up. That said, I don't, like, there's no reason to spend bullets, right? I'm just going to keep doing that until it works, because he's not going to fight back, it seems like. We're not low on bullets right now, but good to be cautious now so we don't end up low on bullets later, right? Okay, this is some common armor that we're not going to use. Uh, we can definitely throw that in the valuables. Throw that in the valuables. I think I am going to try to go for this. It's, oh man, it's very out of our way. All right, maybe not, but let's let's hit a bunch of these nodes. Actually, I probably should have gone here and then swept down like that. Even from a distance, the silhouette of the temple breaks the monotony of the desert horizon. As you enter its cool interior, you suddenly hear footsteps ahead of you. Before you can react, a German soldier comes around the corner. He immediately dives for cover and alerts the rest of his unit. All right, we'll fight for our lives in a temple in the desert. This is a thing we're getting pretty used to. <laughs> we have a lot of experience now. Okay, so we don't know where any of the enemies are. I think it stands to reason that they're probably not in here, so let's just start as far forward as possible. So this is a map we actually fought on recently. Okay, so we can see a medic, and I cannot shoot him from here. Do I even want to use a defensive ability? I'm probably going to with Brunhilde because she's in way worse cover. But, like, do I want to hunker down with you? It might not be worth it. No, I'm going to hold off. Let's preserve the bravery necessary for the double shot. Okay, attack dog. Some guy. I'm going to guess shock trooper. 
starting to get pretty familiar with the uh, the enemy packs here. All right, let's take the double shots. Wow, double crits. That's impressive. Hmm. So I could sneak up on him and just try to hit the 51. That's probably not going to work. I cannot get close enough to take out either of these dudes. But I probably should run over here and get rid of the dog. Can remove at least one enemy from the field. Forty-five on a non-crit is awfully nice. Hey, wait, that's not a shock trooper at all. That's a sniper. Uh, well, it looked like he just, quote-unquote, sniped me with a pistol. Maybe, um... We have no idea how the sniper weapons work, right? Maybe you can't move and use them in the same turn or something. That's fairly common in games. So he has heavy cover from the sides. This is going to give us like a 30% chance to hit. I think I want to I wanna have Brunhilde run down here and do this. And if I get shot in the back again, then I get shot in the back again, I guess. We could do the shotgun blast. It uses two ammo, but you can still do it if the gun only has one ammo in it for some reason. Okay. Definitely finish this guy off with a melee attack. Oh, I think he put us on Overwatch. Well, I mean, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna run over there and shoot him. Sadly, I do not have the ability to punch. Yeah, that's, I mean, I don't know if I think that was a good idea. I wonder if it's the case that you can't just fire a sniper rifle, that Overwatch is the only way you can do it. I don't know why else he would do that that way. It seems very unlikely to me, but I guess you know, the AI just does baffling things sometimes. A Morley Burke break shotgun. Okay, what do we want to... We can throw this in the valuables. That's not anywhere near as good as my current shotgun, right? Lower damage, lower range, higher base accuracy. Yeah, it is not as good. I like my Charleston smoothbore quite a bit better. Let's drive around a little bit and see if we can't maybe just get lucky. You discover some crooked tombstones in the desert sands. A dismal silence blankets this forsaken place. You suddenly see something flash in the endless sea of dunes. You soon come to a track that crosses your path. You see the tire tracks of several vehicles, probably a German military convoy. Your suspicions are confirmed when you find a long line of jerry cans scattered along the edge of the track. German army supplies. They probably fell off a truck during the night or during a night convoy. The jerry cans are full of gasoline. You gather them up and leave before anybody else comes along. Wow. Man, we actually do have enough fuel to drive over there and get that. We suspect there is another map ahead, but I th we got a bunch of fuel at the beginning of the last map. And we still have the ability to cash in that achievement reward. You know what? I'm going to go get it. Let's go find out. You almost miss the bunker entrance half hidden among the dunes. You explore the strange complex, but you don't find a living soul. We did find pieces of some living souls out there. Instead, you encounter a gruesome scene of sheer horror. Viciously mutilated corpses, pools of blood, clear signs of a desperate struggle. What happened here? Your worst fears cannot prepare you for what you find in the next room. If we unlock the character that you unlock by killing 50 zombies, I believe he's male. Adding him to the recruitment pool is actually not a great thing for us right now. Is that... Yep, that is a spore bearer too. Well... 
It's not so dangerous, I guess. I don't know that we need to be, like, worried about it. We don't have any idea where there are more zombies. I'll run to right here. There's a guy down there, a guy up there. He does not quite have the range to attack us. All right. Just hoping to get a little luckier. So I'm not going to be able to shotgun blast. But I'm also not going to be able to knife this guy from a position where I don't get attacked by zombie 2. So I guess I'm just going to single shotgun... We got it right here. We'll single shotgun the spore bearer. Or, you know what? Maybe I don't care about the spore bearer. Actually. Because his, his spore thing doesn't do damage, does it? He locks us in place. That could cause us to take damage. But we at least have some counterplay on that. I really appreciate them all grouping up like this. Makes my life a lot easier. So I have a pretty good shotgun blast from where I am currently standing. But I think there's a guy there too, right? So from right here, it's telling me I won't be able to hit him. Maybe I'd uh, just take the... I don't have a point. I don't have enough bravery, right? I ran all the way out of bravery. She doesn't have the bravery for a multi-attack. Uh, I would have to crit to get a kill. So maybe I should just shoot the spore bearer, as much as that is not very good. With 40 health, he's well out of knife range. That works, though. So, you can't move. We could just hunker down, but I kind of want to have the bravery for a double shot next turn. I think I'm just going to reload with both of them. The zombies are going to run in here and do some serious mauling. I'm hoping that we can get them to split their attacks across the two characters, rather than bringing somebody down all the way. Okay, actually it looks like we're only going to get attacked twice. Yeah, that's not so bad. Alright, so Brynhilda... We can stand back here. Get a shotgun blast off. Talia falls back to there and just does a single shot. Ah, Brynhilda is still going to get attacked, unfortunately. Yeah, Brunilda's going to need some serious healing after this. Okay, so we're pretty likely to get a kill on that guy. I'm just going to single attack him, I think, and hold my bravery. Or you know what, if I do a double shot, we're pretty likely to be able to knife this guy out. Oh, or I'll just hit him. That works, I guess. I think that's slightly worse than the outcome where we get to knife him, unfortunately. But you don't gain bravery by stabbing a corpse after it has laid down. Only before. Ritual dagger, not a cool new knife. I do not value this. Certainly don't value that. And it turns out we don't have to use any healing items at all. Alright, take a rest, get a drink, eat some dates. Did, I, did we bring food with us? It doesn't, we never talk about eating. Presumably you should have to manage your food out here in the desert. Maybe we just, like, we have some Lembus bread, everything's gonna be fine. 
You spot a small troop of German soldiers who have set up camp here. They do not seem to have noticed you yet. Well, then we shoot them. Also, if they have noticed us, we shoot them. And in all other situations, we shoot them. We really, like, we're pretty much a blunt instrument here. I only have a couple of strategies for problem solving. Okay, this is going to be a pretty easy combat, at least. I'm kind of thinking I just want to pass the turn, honestly. Let's just let them come to us. We are in a pretty disadvantageous position here. Too far away to be able to actually shoot them. Okay. So that's a sniper, right? Okay, I can get into shooting range, and he has light cover. If we don't move again, they will have to keep coming over here. But I'm a little worried that if I don't move again while we're this grouped up, um, the sniper overwatch could be a real problem. Yeah, I think we can probably bait them into a uh, much more favorable situation for us. Yeah, like this. This is actually pretty good. Okay. So... And Hilda... Probably can't... I probably cannot get a, uh, a, a good shotgun blast here. But we could go for a normal shotgun attack that has a pretty reasonable chance of killing that sniper. That was a 30% shot. I didn't realize that this half of a wall was high cover. Uh, it turns out to have been fine. And I, I cannot double shot. Right, let's just move to a position that lets this guy know that he is not safe. If we hadn't gotten the uh, the kill there, if I had just missed the shot or something, I don't know that it changes too much about our turn. It just means that I probably take some damage before eventually killing the enemy here. All right, we'll light this guy up and then stab him. Okay, and we don't need to return to the oasis because we're going to go back past it uh, on the way back to the exit. What have we? We have... Wow, who's going to pay $7 for an old toothbrush? I don't know, maybe the traders here, like, could sell it to a mermaid or something. Oh, we found a tinker absorbed in his work. We've seen this event before. He's going to fix all of our uh, clothes and equipment, which is actually pretty nice. We... Yeah, we didn't have any health damage. All of our damage is armor. It is nice to have, like, real armor on for a change. And I don't miss the evade ability very much. Although I will say, um, the ability to reduce damage by 75% does not sometimes give you free bravery points, which is a little bit of a downside. Alright, we got some soldiers. Let's, let's soldier them. Let's do that thing. And there's a coast right there. There could be mermaids, right? And you know, they go crazy for toothbrushes and forks and stuff. And you don't even have to go find them. They come to you. They want to be where the people are. All right, let's just, like, ventilate this dude. I mean, we're not going to be able to keep the Nazi soldier from being able to fire back. Can't get close enough to shoot him. Does he have the ability to move? Okay, he can't get a real flank. If we stay back here, I'm going to go to where the high cover is. He can move to here, but shooting at us from here, I think I still get the benefit of the cover. Ah, good shot. She's really good at that. So if I stand here, I definitely will be flankable. You can always shoot somebody who's adjacent to you as though they didn't as, as though they don't have cover. That is something I learned from reading the codex. So I guess I'm better off going to the half cover here. Ah. 
Well, uh, that's unfortunate, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Okay, do I want to try to get lucky with the shotgun and pick this guy off, or do I want to just accept the two-hit attack, get bit by the dog? I think that's probably the better way to do it. Because this way we get to do this without spending a bullet, and we get to add another knife kill to the list. And we're still going to go through that oasis on the way back, so like, any damage that doesn't kill us is com almost completely meaningless. She failed. Well, that's embarrassing. Alright, we can rationalize that as that dog just being knocked out. No, a bunch of blood didn't come out of him. He dropped his bottle of ketchup that he was carrying when I hit him. Because he passed out. You know how German soldiers love to make dogs carry their ketchup. Why do I have so many get these grenades out of here? Okay, this is a slightly better Adler and Stalnecht prototype. Alright, please be recruitment of a female character. Nope, it's a merchant. Well, that's okay too. Uh, so, a tarnished pocket knife that does 27 to 35 by default. Okay, it is less good than her stiletto. Well, I guess we could buy one ammo box and some fuel. It is not clear to me whether fuel really carries over between maps. I guess I'll buy all the fuel and maybe we can figure it out. We're doing very well on money. Okay, let's head back through the camp and get out of here, I guess. That is a shame, though. So we have enough fuel that we could... Um, we can veer off and hit these two nodes. Maybe we'll get lucky. How are we doing on XP, anyway? Uh, we're not super far away from hitting level 4 with Brunhilde. Not far from your last stop, you notice a pile of books. None of them in a readable state. Disappointed, you leave. That is disappointing. A long gone cold campfire gives you reason to stop and take a deep breath. Not wanting to waste time, you depart again. All right, we'll rest back up to full here, and then... It does feel like there should be some kind of time mechanic or, like, a limited amount of food or something, doesn't it? It's just weird that you have the ability to stop and rest, but the stopping and resting is not automatic. Like, there would be a reason not to do it. I don't know. Freshly churned up sand and the footprints around the entrance lead to just one conclusion. The ancient temple you have discovered here has visitors. Give in to your curiosity and carefully enter the old ruins. You soon spot a squad of soldiers at work on the walls of the altar room. Well, let's jump them then. What, am I going to just not shoot the Nazis? It's ridiculous. What a ridiculous concept. Why would you even suggest that? Okay, uh, only three enemies. We get to start right on top of these two, which is pretty nice. Unfortunately, the way they're positioned, I don't think we're going to get to multi-attack. We're just going to have to um, get hit by the dog, I think. Yeah, there's no position where I can... Oh, I can shoot for... I can shoot both of them from right here. Is he... He is not in cover. Okay. Pretty good start. So now there's only one enemy left. Okay, just a sniper. Well, I think we're going to get out of this one without taking any damage. And out of curiosity, uh, 55 now. Our rate of knife kill income has slowed slightly. Oh, really? He's not going to do anything at all? Okay, well, I mean, we still know approximately where he is, right? He's back here somewhere. Oh, I found him. Yeah, okay, so... Wow, a critical punch.
So I think she recovered all of her bravery there. That's pretty handy. Or I guess just two. She spent... Yeah, she would have spent down to one and then gained two again. Alright, even more bullets and a really horrible piece of armor. Holy crap, that's bad. Both mechanically and from a style perspective. Stink of death hangs over the old bunker. As you explore the bunker, your blood runs cold. Wherever you look, the ground is littered with entrails and mangled corpses. Suddenly, you hear a door slam behind you. You spin around and realize that you have walked into a trap. Wait, like a... did the zombies... Sorry, did the zombies set a trap for me and also they know how to close doors? That's... weird. Okay, so we got some infected over there. Definitely want to put myself in a position where I can kill both of those guys. Let's see, how much how much health are we looking at here? 34 and 40? So it's possible that Brunhilde has got this under control with her shotgun blast. I'd love to be in a position where I can't get shot by the infected. Or by the, uh, the spore guy, but I don't know how reasonable that is. I can't quite make it to a position where I have a double shot. All right, let's start with Brunhilde. We'll do the shotgun blast, and we'll see how things turn out from there. Actually, does she have it from right here? Yeah, she totally does. Although, I guess that guy has cover from me. If I move to, like, here, he won't. I'll be guaranteed to get hit by the spore guy, but the spore guy doesn't do any damage. That's fine. Oh, they explode. Okay, that's not just a lot of art that does actual damage. Uh, well... Probably the smart thing to do here is just to move as far away from this guy as possible and then shoot him. Did I spot another zombie over here? No, okay, down there. Oh, I thought he was still lit up from here. Guess I was mistaken. Well, I don't want to do anything else then. Still, that was a pretty good shotgun blast. Okay, so we have multiple zombies down in that room. This guy's going to be able to get his puke off. That spore is actually pretty inconvenient. Yeah, I can't do anything. Alright, well... I can shoot that barrel. It's not very helpful. Uh, okay, for sure he is highlighted this time. I'm certain of it. Oh, you're kidding. That's bad. That's bad luck. Almost all of the numbers in the damage range were lethal there, but not literally all of them. Well, we got a pretty compelling double shot set up, I guess. Okay, gotta remember we do not want to be adjacent to this guy when he dies. So I moved right here. I have a double shot available. I'm just gonna take it. We know there are guys down there. Like I'm in, I'm in a dangerous position here, no doubt. But we do have to finish that guy off. Pretty important. Renilda comes in to save you, and then you both get. Gently mauled. There's going to be a slight mauling. Really? Huh. I was expecting them both to just move forward. That's curious. I'm not going to complain. Do a little bit of uh, a little bit of teamwork. Oh, they have a counterattack. Interesting. I don't think we've seen anything like that before. Do I want to throw... I'm going to throw bleed on him. Okay. Nice to hit him with the actual or nice to kill him with the actual hit. Somewhere there's a spore guy. Okay, so we don't want to mess around on this. I don't want to uh punch and knife. There are consequences for the punch and knife. Okay. 
Well, do we need to take some healing? Okay, we found ourselves some old gunpowder. We'll cap out our ammo. Two blood red rubies are sewn into the sunken eye holes. Great. What a what a wonderful thing. Okay, I probably want to go back up to full. Or at least at least do repairs on my uh, armor. So we don't have any more tiny repair items. We just have medium and large. I'm only down 14 armor on Brunhilda. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna cap out though. And do we want to use a second one of these? There I might hold off. Because Natalia is guaranteed to be in range to use the healing on herself if she gets hit really hard. Whereas Brynhilda, like, it's more important for Brynhilda to actually be at full because she's more likely to be elsewhere. Um, I'm going to swap these fancy potions out for the med kits, I think. Yeah, I hear you. The thing is, like, the med kit already heals her to full no matter what, and we can save these for a situation where we're dealing with more uh, characters who have more health. Alright, I think we're ready to go. It's a shame we're not at full... Um, not at full bravery. I guess we could hit this node. We have enough fuel, and like I said, it seemed like we started with... We got a bunch of extra fuel at the beginning of the last map. Yeah, let's just go ahead and hit this node, I guess. An excavation site. Using the surrounding rocks as cover, you make your way up to the enemy camp. A large unit of German soldiers have begun excavations here. Well, let's kill them all. And then re-repair our armor and then kill some more guys. Alright, Sniper, Nazi Trooper 2, couple of the good attack dogs. Alright, so everybody, pretty much everybody is up this way. Okay, I can't actually get close enough to shoot at... Oh, if I'm right... From right here, I have a shot. I'm gonna go take it. Okay, so she got him for a pretty good amount. Not, unfortunately, lethal. I'm hoping that the sniper will just do his overwatch thing. Okay, I do not think that is an attack dog based on the amount of movement we saw. Ooh, I think he might actually... Okay, no, he does not quite have both of them. Whoa! I uh, tried to click on Natalia. The camera was not done moving just yet. Someday I'll break that habit. But also, left-clicking should not move you. It's just like... That's just not how video games should work. Uh, well... We can run up to a position where we have a guaranteed hit, but not a kill on that guy. I cannot quite get to a position where I'm going to have a... Actually, you know what? From right here... I'm, like, right on top of this dude. Yeah, from right here, I do, in fact, have the guaranteed hit. Okay, interesting choice from the dog to run at someone he can't hit instead of hitting someone he can hit. Alright, well, don't have a lot of options with Brunhilde. Definitely just going to do that because we are not in a place where I feel like we can afford to screw around right now. We kind of have to get the damage out. Man, <laughs> that's unfortunate. We really need just like a slightly better pistol for her. Is that the first time we've actually seen an enemy reload? Alright, 
That's what I think of you surviving and stuff. Right, am I gonna bleed? I, I think I'm just gonna shoot this guy normally so that we go into the uh, final encounter with full bravery. Unfortunately, we are going to have to use some uh, some restorative items now. Maybe we'll get some as loot. After defeating your enemies, you explore the temple. What were the Germans looking for here? You soon find a deep shaft that leads into the interior of the ancient building. You lower yourselves on ropes. Okay. Yep, they smashed up the stone chests. They have the metal crates. Let's see what they have found and also what they brought. More petroleum. Okay. Money. What a surprise. Okay, that's actually, like, a lot of damage that we suffered there. Maybe this would be a good time to claim that trophy that gives the armor repair kits. Uh, this one. And honestly, we're not that far away from the next level of that. Okay, we'll just touch up Natalia's armor, and I'm going to go ahead and hit her with a compression bandage. We're certainly not short of real healing items. All right, let's go do that final encounter. Final encounter for this map, anyway. On a rise ahead of you, you spot a lone soldier with his back to you. Sneak forward quickly and easily overpower him. Now you crouch behind the Wehrmacht Jeep and survey the site below. An, impri an improvised German camp. <laughs> Just point a gun at him. Tell him to tie himself up. Its size suggests it must be a base of some importance. A soft groan tells you that the soldier has regained consciousness. Well, the fact that we have the ability to intimidate him suggests that there is something to something worth learning about the camp. So I guess let's interrogate him and hope that he doesn't just scream bloody murder. We were ordered to set up a radio station here. Please, don't hurt me. I'm just the radio operator. I was just looking for a better place to set up the antenna. That's all you're going to get out of him. You gag and tie the man and then think about what to do. Well, attacking the base is potentially dangerous. We are... We are probably a little shorthanded compared to what the game is expecting at this point. It might be an encounter designed for three or four people. But we're pretty powerful. And I do like loot. Let's have Adam. This is exactly how you end up getting overconfident and dying. Alright, we... Yep, a lot of enemies. Uh, a lot of them are only tier 1, though. Alright, let's see what we can set up on this first turn. So I can get to here... Unfortunately, that dog has high cover, which is ridiculous. That dog is not using cover, but we're not going to be able to get around it, unfortunately. Well, I can move up here and try the double shot. I'm really disappointed that I can't get—I can't quite get a hit on that sniper. I could from here. If I stand in the open, I could try to just paste the sniper. I mean, the pistol is... We have a 15% chance of killing him. I cannot do it from a position where I have any cover at all. We're gonna get we're gonna get got by that dog no matter what I do. We're gonna need Brunhilde to finish off the level two trooper. Maybe the right play is just to move to here, shoot that trooper once, and hold on to double shot for next round. And then Brunhilde can Move to this position and finish the job. A little aggressive. She's tough, though. 30% chance to hit. I think it's probably not worth using Shotgun Blast here. Let's just take out this guy, and then we'll, uh, we'll see what kind of multi-attack opportunities they open up for us on this turn. There being an extra dog means that we're probably going to see... These two attack dogs right next to each other. That's a pretty good shotgun blast target. Okay, against 
against anybody who doesn't run all the way behind the wall, we have high cover, so I'm hopeful that we won't get shot again. Okay. So, how do we want to do this? Um, we could use a double attack. I'm going to move to here. We're going to double attack one of the... Hmm. That guy I only have a 40% against. Yeah, maybe I double shot like him and one of the dogs, and then we try to actually use the shotgun blast down here, where it seems like it would be pretty devastating. Come on, please show me. Ah, that was not 40 damage. Shoot. Well... If I, shotgun, if I stand right here and shotgun blast, I'm opening myself up to a ton of counterattacks, but I also will do a huge amount of damage. Actually, I don't quite hit the medic. The medic will run forward and just heal the Nazi trooper. I think I still want to do this. Like, even just hitting both of those guys is so good. Yep, so she's just going to get uh, mauled here a little bit. And we will put her back together afterward. Oh wow, that was lucky. Okay, interesting choice. Yep, we knew that was going to happen. So... With Brynhilda having uh, evaded there, we do have enough bravery to go for a bleed. Uh, maybe what I want to do is just, like, knife the dog. I probably don't want to knife the dog and reload. I probably want to move. Hmm. The sniper, I think, is out of ammo, right? Does that dog have cover against me? Really? Okay, I'm going to have Brynhilda fall back to here and just finish this guy off. Oops, I clicked on her with the knife. Well, at least she didn't take that as a uh, as an order. Okay, so the Nazi's probably going to get topped off by the medic. But he's in a much worse position. The medic did not heal him. Alright, I have knife range. So I'm just going to run into the open. If we double shot here, this will let Brunhilda kill the Nazi trooper, and the medic probably won't counterattack because he'll just want to heal himself and run. If we'd just gone for the single attack on the, the Nazi trooper, then the medic probably shoots one of us before moving. So I think this was worth the extra bravery expenditure. Six is not a great start. I don't... Do we... We have to crit to kill him. But, I mean, we can just whittle him down. He doesn't heal for as much damage as we deal with our combined melee attacks. This turn, it should be pretty easy to, uh... To get what we need. Yeah, he's at 37. Alright, there it is. Those medics really ought to uh, just try to kill you when they're the only person left. The, this, this behavior is extremely exploitable. You search the radio tent. Apart from a small field radio, you do not find anything of interest. Then your eyes fall in a waste paper basket next to the field table, full to the brim with radio transcripts. Interim report on the Ararat Expedition. To the research battalion near east, we are gratified to announce that we have also encountered outposts of the target culture in the Armenian Highlands. The Valkyrium network is therefore considerably larger than previously believed. It should extend at least from the African Atlantic coast to the Caucasus. In the north, as is known, to the Russian White Sea. 
We'll keep you informed about, uh, about any further high, uh, findings. Okay, so the counterintelligence officer definitely said the word Valkyrium. Uh, it is mentioned on the Codex page. Ooh, okay, hold on. We got some good stuff here. Uh, and also this toothbrush. So another hammer and pliers, and this is a an epic quality sniper rifle. All right, hold on. Um, we should... I guess there's no reason to use an item. Hold on. I'm going to move this to the valuables. This is a pretty good gun. 12 tiles, 74 base accuracy. Pretty good damage. Like I said, I'd really like to use a sniper character uh, next next time we get to form a party for the next adventure. All right, we are headed off to the third map, so it looks like there's a couple of episodes left in this adventure. Uh, I think Natalia is almost certainly going to be at max level by the time we finish here. You breathe a sigh of relief as you finally leave the merciless heat of the Syrian desert behind you. The awe-inspiring mountains of the Armenian highlands rise before you. Legend has it that Noah landed somewhere here with his ark as the waters of the Great Flood receded. But what is the connection with the wrath of God? Okay, cool. We do our rests and we get all of our stuff back. Instinctively, you look up, but the mountain peaks around you do not reveal their secrets. You take another long break before you set off on the last leg of your journey. It says last leg of your journey, but there's another dot on the map after this. Is there a... Okay, there is a recruitment tile over here. We could still get lucky and pull one of our female recruits. Um, So, do we want 6% shotgun crit chance or more effective repair kits? You know, I don't know how this works in conjunction with repair kits that you, like, use out of battle. Because obviously it would give us plus 8 repair on any kit we used with an action with her in combat. Does the Codex make this clear? Hold on, Anna. Back out of that. Okay, uh, basics? Let's see. Skill icons of the green sign give advantages. Doesn't look like it is... Hmm, okay. It might be the case that we get the bonus on any repair kit that we use during a uh, downtime like this. That's how I would hope that it would be implemented. What's our shotgun crit chance right now? We go from 10 to 16. I mean, that's not bad. And crits are really powerful with them giving back a point of bravery. Maybe we should just go for the crit. I'm going to go for the crit. We're going to We're going to really focus her on shotguns. Okay, and I think uh, we are in sector three of three. Okay, so that last dot is just like the end of the, the adventure. All right, well, I think that is going to have to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Come back next time, Monday, for another episode as we finally wrap up The Wrath of God, and we'll see you then.